Ignition uh, secondary ignition uh, analysis using a scope. Um, I'm using an old school sun scope. Uh, the reason I'm using it is just for the ease of showing you guys some different aspects of uh, types of misfire. So we're going to create a couple misfires and we're going to look at it. Only two leads I have connected. I have one lead connected to the plug wire and this is typical for any scope. And I have another lead connected to my number one cylinder. And the way that this would work would be every time a cylinder would fire, you're gonna have impulses coming out of the coil. There's one coil for the whole engine. So it's gonna be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. What does the red trigger lead do? It coordinates those six. So it would be kind of like playing the drums. You're going one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This one's a plug wire. This one fires one time for every six of these. You send these impulses into a machine that has a program built into it, and we can figure out what's what on the screen. So let's take a look at that. And again, this is just an old school sun machine. I like it, it's one of the best uh, ignition, just for ease of viewing the ignition system. Uh, it's got the firing order on there already. This is very similar to what uh, the Snap-on Varus and the uh, Snap-on Vantage Pro does. Uh, it would look like this. The parade format is nice. Um, I can also do this with my Pico, which is very nice, and the Pico gives way better detail than this thing does. But this is just the scope I'm choosing for this right now. <laughs> for now, we don't have a misfire. Um, I have my gas analyzer screen up there too, which is the other reason I picked this one, because I wanted to show you guys the head gasket one. But the first one I want to do is I'm going to unplug that same fuel injector, right? And, and this is going to be, well, I don't know which one. We'll look at it on the screen. I just unplugged the fuel injector. What do you notice on the screen? We don't see it. Pretty typical injector problem. I don't see it. So how do we recognize an injector problem? First off, let me plug it back in. Let's do a couple snaps, take a look at it. Those are some good looking signals. We pause this, to go back, take a look. I might have missed it. We'll look at where I snapped that, right there. Right there is where I snapped the throttle. It is normal to see all of these lines increasing. That's the amount of KV the coil is building up before the plug fires. The reason why they all increased is on a snap throttle, your cylinder pressures increase. So that line's gonna increase, that's totally normal. Um, as we look through them, you don't want to take any one shot and say, oh, that looks bad. This is pretty typical. This is a good looking pattern. Uh, the reason why the spark line, which is next to it, that's these lines right here, firing line, spark line. The reason the spark lines kind of get choppy, you could just call it turbulence. That thing's firing in a high compression, high swirl environment. It's like a candle blowing in a breeze. So the spark jump in that gap, it's going to jump around on a snap. Totally okay to see all that hash in those plug wires, sorry, in those uh, spark lines during the snap. So that's a good looking snap. Now let's go back with the fuel injector and unplug it take a look at it. Watch the injector. Alright, I unplugged the injector. Certainly can't see it at idle, can you? I didn't see any of them change. That should be cylinder cylinder six. That should be the cylinder six injector, which would be all the way to the right. Do we see any change in that at all? Man, this car's got a dead miss right now, right? I'm gonna snap it. This is where you're gonna see it. Freeze the picture. Let's get our gas readings out of the way so you can see it. Go back, take a look at the snap, and I want you to get used to looking at this. This is what a no fuel misfire will do. Look at this heart, look at this spark line right here. Get a couple more frames of that. Look at that. No fuel misfire. That is a classic view of a no fuel misfire. Um, this would be figure figure four 
in my book, page 14, figure four. We'll refer back to that in a minute. Figure four, page 14, be the top left picture and the bottom right picture. No fuel misfires. Uh, the theory behind that, couple different views on why it looks like that. I'm gonna go with this one. Fuel acts as a conductor in that spark plug electrode. If there's no fuel in that cylinder, it becomes more difficult for the spark to jump the gap. And so basically what you're dealing with right here is the spark on these ones is firing the whole distance. And on this one, it's only firing right there. And this big spike is a large coil oscillation, which is energy left over that can't fire that spark plug. We'll go with that one. Doesn't matter, bottom line, what's a no fuel misfire look like? It looks like that. And what, what, to catch it, you have to understand that the car idling isn't good enough, right? You need the car running, do a snap throttle. You can see it for sure. You see it live too. The key is the snap. No fuel misfire. You see something like that, don't put a set of plugs and wires in it for sure. All right, let's show you ignition one now. This one's a little bit difficult to duplicate exactly, but I'm gonna do one. There's so many different variables you can have when it comes to the ignition. Uh, one's gonna be an open plug wire, and I'm gonna do this very quickly and pause it because I don't wanna do any damage to the system. I'm just gonna pull plug wire off watch it and then I'll put it back on that's frozen that one's easy I don't need to snap it what happened why does it look like that an open plug wire there's no spark line that spark has nowhere to go so what do we get we get a large coil buildup that has no release so you see very very high firing line and no spark line that is an open secondary okay to see the height of that, what we want to do is unfreeze this, change this to a 50 kV scale, and do it again. Watch it. Pause that one. And actually, this test tells you two things. One, you got an open plug or wire. We don't know which one, but at least one of them is, right? Um, what you can do to identify if it's a plug or wire is you can move the wire to the next cylinder, switch the wires, and see if it moves with the wire. Or switch the plugs, see if it moves with the plugs. Honestly, when I see that in the field, I don't care what's the car getting. All new plugs, all new wires if it's a conventional system like this. Cap and rotor as well. The other thing this test tells you is the coil output. So this is how you check an ignition coil for how much energy that it's able to produce is what's the height of that spike, that line right there, that's 40,000 volts this coil's putting out. It's actually burying my scale. So is that a good coil? Yes it is. This is how you do a coil test too. That's what an open plug wire looks like and that's how you do a coil reserve voltage test. 40,000 volts from that coil, I like that. All right, I'm gonna show you what a shorted plug wire looks like. And this can vary. You have to understand that with shorted plug wires, if it's a direct short, or if it's a short with an air gap, it's gonna look different. If it's a short to ground with an air gap, it's actually gonna look very, very close to what the spark plug looks like. And it's hard to identify those. So let's see if I can show you one. We'll try to get an air gap in on this too. Look at the number four. Looks like the other cylinders, doesn't it? Watch on a snap. Watch it on a snap. <coughs> this is key. Watch the snap. Watch the other cylinders. What do you notice they do? They rise. They rise. Go back and take a look at that. If you were just looking at this at idle, you'd miss it. It's got a dead cylinder miss from a shorted plug wire. It's just not totally shorted. On the snap, what we want to see, all of those lines should increase. Initial surge, see all my firing lines jump up? What do you notice about number four? Staying the same. Why is it staying the same? Because it's not firing in the combustion chamber. And that's the answer with that. It's firing, it has an air gap, it's not firing in the combustion chamber. So that's what a sorted plug wire is going to look like 
that does not have uh, a direct sort that has an air gap. Uh, let's see if we can give it a full sort. Actually, I don't think we can. Yeah, and I can't give this one a full sort. And the reason I can't, this is a distributor system. There's still an air gap. Where's the air gap? Inside the cap. Cap and rotor air gap. So I'm sorted out directly now. I can't show you a direct sort on this design because of the cap rotor air gap that I can't get inside to sort out the rotor on the one cylinder. But that's good enough. Some fundamentals of ignition systems. You see a real high firing line, no spark line. What is it? Real high firing line and no spark line. You're looking for an open in the secondary, right? You see a normal looking pattern where when you snap it, the spark line, which is the second line, jumps real high. What are we talking about? Injector, no fuel misfire. You see um, a, an ignition waveform that looks pretty decent, but doesn't change on a snap. It's not firing in the combustion chamber. And there's so many different things uh, to look at with these. Uh, the key, truthfully, is to get a scope that has the capability of doing this and uh, doing multiple cars, known goods, known bads. You just start to get used to what, what they're supposed to look like. So a little bit of secondary ignition using the scope. We'll do primary next.